my name is Manu, as uh, the gentleman introduced me, and uh, we consider ourselves as an SME. We are an SME, and I am one of you. Uh, thank you very much for coming here, and uh, I hope basically I can uh, uh, exchange my thoughts basically over how to grow an SME over the last uh, seven years of running Rolling Arrays, and definitely basically the uh, main topic of the day, basically how to use HR and how Rolling Arrays has used HR to grow uh, to 100 people company from zero when I came to Singapore in 2009. Uh, uh, am I audible? Yeah. Uh, so when I came in 2009 in Singapore, uh, uh, I wanted to start a company which, uh, which can basically help the medium size, small uh, enterprises, and the large enterprises, basically in the field of HR. And, uh, and while doing this over the last seven years, we could grow to a 100 people company. And the most important thing that we always uh, kept uh, uh, to us as a secret was that uh, when we were growing from zero to 100, we always made sure that the people that we are hiring are the ones who are going to do everything and anything for the company. And the people are managed by HR initiatives. And, and, and that's basically typically what we say today is HR transformation for an SME. I must say that in the last uh, five, seven years of the overall, uh, how HR has graduated from just being a trans, uh, administrative function of any company, whether it is an SME or whether it is a large size company, they have now, I would say, managed to secure a seat in the boardroom. Now, definitely for the large enterprises, everybody basically thinks about the fact that uh, HR actually can increase the bottom line of the company, can increase the profitability, and definitely they deserve a seat in the boardroom, as compared to the earlier thoughts basically that most of the businesses had. Now, when we, when we talk about SMEs, how important and I would say more important it becomes when talking about a five people company, a one people company, a 10 people company, which definitely aspires to grow as quickly as possible, probably to a 50 people, 100 people, depending upon the industry sizes basically that uh, you would belong to. And how important it is basically for each of those to be aligned completely to the business objectives that the SMEs aspire to develop through. And I think if we have that kind of a HR transformation strategy or somebody, probably you could be the owner and you yourself basically can take that HR transformation strategy as your own agenda, I think that should be good enough. And probably let's say when you, once you grow to five people company or 10 people company, maybe a designated person basically can grow that particular agenda, making sure that the every single person who works in your respective SME is aligned to that particular business agenda. And I think that is probably the secret of growing an SME to a bigger size, and I think keep growing and probably become a multinational company. And, and, and I must say basically that this is from our own experience that I till today make sure that everybody in the organization basically is aligned to the business uh, goal, and then basically we kept growing. And of course, basically that drives the culture. Uh, we're looking at let's say 10 people. 10 people become 50 people, and then those 50 people basically became by looking at the culture and breeding the culture. And those 50 will probably drive to 100 and 2000 and vice versa. And that's basically the chain, and that's how we breed the culture, and that's how we breed the business objective and the goal. And that's how probably the big companies are formed. We are yet to be there, but I hope basically that's, that's how it's going to be. I wanted to give this message basically before uh, coming on to the main topic. I would say basically this, this this probably becomes the core, and, and if you guys can take this particular thought uh, to your own enterprises when you basically are running your day-to-day -day job, I think it will be helpful, and, and, and probably I think that's, that's, that's my bit of it basically uh, from my, my side uh, to give you that advice. I will uh, pull in my uh, colleague, Gerald. I was discussing with him that uh, what, what is the level two message that we could give in this particular event, and from our interactions with multiple SMEs, and the bigger companies actually who are doing this HR transformation and the takeaway which SMEs probably could adopt. And I think Gerald came up with a very good uh, proposition and examples which I thought probably we could share and give it to you together. So I will uh, let Gerald basically take the... This is the, this is the goal to uh, business thing basically that I was covering. I will let Gerald basically talk about the level two which probably can help you uh, bring forward the HR agenda in your companies. Okay, hi, good morning everyone. Um, my name is Gerald. Uh, I have known Manu for more than seven years. Right? Uh, I have seen how Rolling Arrays has grown from 
he being the one man, I, I knew him even before he started it, um, to where it is today. And I'm proud to say that uh, being an employee together with him, I, I don't see myself necessarily just as an employee. I see myself as a, you know, a partner with him because I think when we are looking at growing a business, when you're thinking about growing, uh, even for myself personally in my own uh, career, right? It's always great that you could have built something. And I think the one thing that um, Manu has done very well is he has uh, always made it very clear to everyone in the organization what the goal, what the objective, what are we trying to achieve, what is the business, you know, what is the objective that as a business, as, as rolling a race, we are trying to do. And I think that's very important because um, as we interact with a lot of our customers, now, um, for rolling a race, honestly, the bulk of our customers are actually larger enterprises. But what we really found uh, in our interactions with them is that even larger enterprises have their own challenges. And I think one of the key things is that um, we have replicated, managed to replicate again and again, um, is uh, more or less these three steps that we have seen, where we help them to successfully do their HR transformation. So first thing is, the HR agenda needs to be important. In every organization, the reason why your organization can grow and succeed is because of your people. So the HR agenda should be high up there in your priority list, especially if you're an SME because the contribution of every single employee that you have is very important. So, so how we do this is usually through uh, a discovery phase. So this is always the first step. Now, when we say a discovery phase, this is where all of you may need to sit down and think about how am I going to communicate these kind of things to the rest of my employees, to the rest of my team. The only way you can do that is if you have a very clear picture about where you are and where is it that you actually want to go. Right? So you've got to write it down. It has to be something that's concrete. And we believe that this is the first step. And we ask even large organizations, even enterprises, to actually do an exercise like this with their stakeholders. Why? Because it is only when people sit down and actually start thinking about it, and they ask themselves, you know, what are we trying to achieve? What do we want to do? Then they start thinking, you know what? In order to achieve this next business objective, right, we need to do this, this, and that. So the first thing is we talk about discovery, and here we talk about discovery of HR processes. So when you think about where you're going to go, then you can also think about, okay, in order for me to go all those places that I want to go, right, how am I going to bring my team together with me? Now, to some extent, you could think about, okay, does the compensation plan make sense? Something as simple as that. Now, again, as an SME, you may not have a huge budget, but that's fine. The important thing is you actually think about how each of your processes, whether it's your compensation planning, your, your, your payroll, etc., all of these needs to be there in order to support your business objective. Okay? So, the HR processes um, that you look at can be based on industry, number of employees, geographical spread. Now, we say this because uh, a lot of times as companies grow and expand, you know, uh, from small eventually becoming a SME, um, especially if you have, let's say, geographical spreads, right? Things become defragmented and you start doing a lot of things in silo even though you're a small organization. Now, we hope that you actually uh, try and grasp this, that that shouldn't really happen because the more uniform, the more harmonized things are across the different departments and the more aligned everyone is in the organization, usually the faster it is you can accelerate and grow, okay? So, um, this is just one of the examples that we put together. Um, assuming, let's say, the industry that you are operating in is in logistics and transportation, you have about 200 employees um, and you operate in three different countries. Now, it could be that the challenge that you are facing is you actually have a decreasing attrition rate. Now, if you have 200 people and even 10% people leave or, you know, no, I shouldn't say 10%, but let's say 10 people leave, that's actually 5% of your entire workforce. Think about how that's going to impact your productivity and your business. That's a lot, right? So, how are you running your HR process? If you even have HR processes in the first place, right? 
in order to achieve your objective. So this is something that you need to think about. And, and I must tell you one very uh, critical thing that I've realized that whenever we are automating a particular process, it comes from a problem. However, if we know that the problem is going to come and we collect that data that one day I'm going to have that problem, at that time only we automate. That's fine when the problem is there. But we should collect the data until the time that the problem is there. The reason is when you finally automate and get the results, you would be able to compare that from first year to third year, the problem actually built up and I collected this data. And from third year, I automated it to the fourth year. And now I can compare between first to third and third to fourth, what is the benefit of that? The reason is that you would probably invest not only in HR, in multiple functions in your organization. And when you invest, sometimes you wouldn't know why did I invest and whether that was probably giving me an ROI. And I think that's very critical. That's exactly what Gerald also mentioned, attrition. So if you are measuring the data, why attrition is happening, maybe from the first year until the third year, I think you would be able to absolutely measure when you make an investment. And then if it doesn't improve, probably you could probably uh, do something else, maybe change the system or something like that. And I think this could be adopted probably in every single realms of your uh, verticals that you basically run in your SME. But I think, yeah. Uh, so getting the data before probably finding the problem, I think is very critical, uh, which probably all of us could adopt. Okay, so what's in it for SMEs? So. You've done your discovery, you've done your alignment, and we talk a little bit about the system. Now, we understand that SMEs generally have limited budgets. I might be wrong, right? But honestly, you may not necessarily need to own an entire system, right? Just so that you can run your HR function. So there are alternatives that are available to you, which as you can see over here, so if the issue that you are having is that you are trying to expand and you can't recruit the right people. Maybe you need some applicant tracking processes. Now, or you could hire an external or you outsource it, you get an external headhunter to help you or something like that. So these are just generally some of the options that we have seen that SMEs adopt, right? Small, medium enterprises, they, they adopt these kind of processes and especially for things like payroll. How many of you outsource your payroll? Just a show of hands. Nobody? Every one of you run payroll in-house? Okay. Have you ever considered the value of outsourcing? Or have you done a business case that how much it's going to cost me if I outsource and how much it's costing me today? Inclusive of the resources that run it in-house. So you can think about it. Right. So. These are just some of the things um, we, we have done and we have seen. And of course, there are solutions that are available on the cloud, um, you know, some general HR solutions that help you to manage your leave applications and things like that. So regardless of whichever one that you take, just bear in mind that the solutions have to come in, have to follow from the alignment which comes from the discovery and the understanding of your business objectives. And that needs to be communicated across your organization from day one, right? So this is usually always the last step. So if you are thinking, okay, I'm just going to get a system to help me manage my HR, um, my recommendation is don't. Take a moment to step back and think about your business objectives, how you can align that to everyone in the organization. And then from there, you choose the right systems that actually help you in that approach, okay? And while I'm saying this to you, uh, this is also something that applies even to larger enterprises because they go through huge procurement processes, buy huge systems, and in the end, they discover that it doesn't even meet their business objectives. Yeah, and I must tell you one thing that uh, when, when, when as an SME we are growing, uh, for the bigger organizations, they could probably afford a best of the breed solution. For example, let's say if an uh, organization is about 5,000 people strong and they want to get the best learning solution in the world, they could probably afford a best of the breed because it comes with a price for the integration. However, for the SMEs, if you want to transform your HR, in the beginning itself, you should choose one solution which you know that probably has each and every single function which you would require in the next couple of years. And that's probably exactly, I think, 
a decision you could take. Otherwise, I mean, I could tell you from my experience that while we were an expert in HR, in the beginning, if you probably uh, select a payroll solution, and it might not be able to do a compensation planning or it might not be able to do a simple performance management, then probably that's not the solution you could choose for because you would not want to invest in an integration scenario, multiple systems, basically. And, and, and even though you just want to adopt one single module, but you should adopt a system which probably can cater to each of the modules that you would require in the next coming years, or probably at least for a short-term plan of three years. Yeah. So the second step is the alignment, which we spoke about. Now, the alignment, this applies to everyone in your organization. And one of the key questions you should ask is really, what's in it for me or what's in it for them? Now, so. Again, I'll take the example of Manu and myself, right? Manu has always had to ask himself, every time he's asking me to do something, what's in it for me? So it either has to give me a career opportunity or a growth or something like that, which will actually benefit not just him in order for him to get the information or, or get the updates that he wants, but also how it benefits me, right? So if he were to implement a system um, that needs me to go in and key in like 20 different fields to update my performance management, he better make sure that those information and results are actually being weighed so that I get compensated right. You get what I'm saying? And then, again, only at the end, then you talk about getting the system, which is uh, usually a combination of knowing the processes and then uh, getting the system to be aligned to that process. Okay, so that's basically the summary of the three-step approach. Now, if you are thinking about any technological adoption for your HR, so this is what we actually recommend. And um, to come back to uh, the whole cycle, your business objectives will drive your process. Your process will drive your system. Your system will give you data which you can then use to analyze and go back and say, okay, um, do I need to readjust, realign my business objectives and so on and so forth and it actually forms a cycle like this. I think this, this uh, slide looks very trivial but I must say that I think this is ab absolutely a magical step if we could completely understand and adopt it. That if I am having a system of truth instead of a system of record, I think that's it. And for having a system of truth, I need to ma ensure that the data I am getting from my system is absolutely correct because that forms my basis to change my business, which in turn will change my process, and which in turn will change my system, and the cycle continues. And I think that will probably help us to stay current. I wouldn't use the word innovation today, because I think innovation is secondary. If we stay current, we are automatically profitable. And I think we have examples of BlackBerry, Nokia. They didn't do anything wrong, but uh, they are the brands of the past. At the same time, we can see probably the, 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 uh, the current uh, competition and a healthy competition between Google and Microsoft, uh, uh, Oracle and SAP, or Apple and uh, Samsung, basically that we see that. They stay current and they give us basically what, what we want to consume and probably they are profitable. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you.